Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, it's Monday. It's auction week. Um, we are. Uh, start off with I want to thank everybody for Friday night uh, and their efforts. Um, they encouraged me to drink alcohol and lots of it I did drink alcohol. Take yeah, for a good cause. It was for a good cause. It was. It was, it was for a fantastic cause. Uh, everybody who engaged by bidding and all that sort of stuff, we raised a significant amount of money, uh, over 6,000. We reckon by the time all uh, donations and everything were probably going to be closer to seven, yeah. but hopefully we'll, we'll 6,000. Uh, for uh, Macmillan. So this was coming from bottle number ones of uh, Belfast Whiskey Week. We had uh, some fairly uh, live, um, spontaneous um, creations, donations, charity uh, efforts. Uh, we started off mental. with uh, Paul shaving his head and, and beard. beard, the whole lot. He's now bald as a could. Uh, we then had various... Uh, mixtures of that to a handlebar moustache a Mohican that got 150 quid a Mohican got copied 100 quid uh, again copied my head I give him another 50 quid just to do that alone now obviously that's the original but uh, they even auctioned off the poor shirt of the back of Barajano we did we auctioned off a very limited edition um, game worn game worn turtleneck uh, <laughs> Barry Chandler was very generous and donated that uh, he also gave a bottle of the Redbreast 10 year old and there's two sample bottles in it, a, a Palace and a Palace Redbreast and I can't remember what the other one means because I was full of whiskey at that stage. <laughs> um, also, Peter Cooney uh, matched me. You sold by, the shirt off his I back. I sold the shirt off his back as well. Yeah, game worn t-shirt from Peter Cooney from the Whistler and my t-shirt. From and Boan. A couple of glasses from uh, Whistler and Boan as well. So, <laughs> look, amazing. it was fantastic. Jarlett, uh, doesn't know how to open a bottle of whiskey correctly no. so he broke the cork in it and he ended up then uh, I think there's only about five samples left because he drank the rest well he, he was threatening to drink and then did. Dave O'Connell as well and Dave O'Connell actually yeah as well that's a very generous one uh, a sample of the Port Mordant the 100 mil of the Port Eckenville uh, Port Dunville sorry Port Mordant and Jarla threw in a 100 mil of Glendronach not Glendronach no the, the 20 year the, old the 20 year old yeah exactly Dunville of, of Dunville single cask as well so that was you were very drunk so I don't even know how you remember this to be honest with you yeah I was a bit ropey eyed <laughs> but it was great can't, bother, we can't wait till we're doing it all again that's what I'm looking forward to when, when's the next one uh, you um, anyway, let's get to work this week we are back to work we are flying we've uh, big enough auction this month a uh, lot of bottles coming in and we've processed a lot of them already I'm seeing a huge, not a huge, but there's a, a fair few Waterfords in this month. Uh, last month we spoke about the single farm origins. The couple of the single farm origins from last month, the South African releases, then uh, Knock Row and the Kuladine done great. Yeah, kind of I mean, got six, 600 odd euros. This month uh, it seems to be the turn of the Cuvée, mm -hmm. and that seems to have matched with. Waterford's shift, I think, is the best way of describing it to that. I've seen that they have the Gaia uh, 2.1 is out, and I only have a 1.1 there, but I just wanted to point out that they now have the 2.1 out. The cuvées and the micro cuvées is where we originally, what I thought where Waterford were going to be, it was going to, they were going to have a, an annual or a biannual or a seasonal release mm. from their distillery. Uh, obviously, a few core range products, but then the, 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 the cuvées, few yeah. cuvées celebrating each season or each year and all that sort of stuff. That plan shifted somewhere along the line and we have all the single farm oh, origins. They had no intention that it was all in your head. That's that's a strong possibility <laughs> as well. Yeah, that's a strong possibility. But that plan changed. Now we seem to be back to the, the cuvées and they seem to be getting great uh, attention. We have, I'll start this end, uh, Voyage Extraordinaire. Don't start. In my French accent. <laughs> uh, we have the original cuvée, which was the pilgrimage, the very first cuvée. This bottle not only comes with I can't say that word, what I think that is. This one's got been signed by Ned as well. And the little sample of, of... Don't please call it Ned's Juice because that sounds wrong on so many levels. That's not Ned's Juice. 
it's a little sample that Ned put together. Yeah, it's not any particular one. Yeah, but Ned's punch. juice sounds like he urinated in something or something like that. We can't call that. Okay. Not that Ned would do that. Ned's no. a professional. Uh, you've got the second release of the Cuvées, I believe, was the Lomar. It's the what they call the Winter Warm. It was done for last year. Um, uh, again, as I say, I think uh, COVID that we dealt with sort of changed maybe how they, how they release stuff out. Obviously, it changed the very first one. People were, that was going to be a big event. Everybody was going yeah. to be down there and they were going to be drinking on the day and all that sort of stuff. And right. it changed and they had to do a drive through and that. Michael Cuvée, the next one is the Picnic. 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 Uh, and then we have this bad boy. This is the Blood Brothers. So this is the Friends of Waterford uh, group, the Friends of Waterford distillery group on Facebook, Facebook. Not for your sake, for your fun. Uh, they worked with Ned and put them into small, uh, what they call blood tubs, the little small barrels, casks. Uh, and this is their cuvee that come out. And we have a few of those in the auction. Um, they were There's only 900 bottles of that. So I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it is. It is the smallest production number of the Waterfords. Okay. Um, uh, the pilgrimage is four, 1,500. I think the Rathedon uh, 1.1 originally was 1,400. Um, this is only 900. So there literally is only 900 bottles. Um, I know people will be looking for that. I know a lot of people were disappointed they didn't get a bottle in the original thing. And then we're going to have the whole, well, why are they buying it? They're going to sell it. They can do come up with it because they bought it. It's um, theirs. It's theirs. Uh, so they can, that's a few of them up for sale. So that's uh, cuvées from Waterford. This month we also have a fair few of the single farm origins as well. Yeah, there's well. a fair bit of blue knocking around. Fair bit of blue knocking around, exactly. Uh, the next we have Rider's Tears. I, I have been beating this little drum for a wee while now um, because, again, the most popular question we get asked is what's a good investment? Yeah. What's a good buy? Everybody, a lot of people do uh, Middleton very rare. Um, and then I sort of burst a bubble when I tell them that it's not all that rare some of the years because some of the bottles are 50 and 60,000 bottles high of a production, yeah. high production number. Not high. It's not really that high I mean, compared to the Scotch market, but it's high enough. Yeah. It doesn't live up to the moniker of... <coughs> Sorry, apologies. Unclean. Uh, it doesn't I'm live not. up to the moniker of very rare when there's 60,000 other bottles out there. We have to burst rather a lot of people's bu bubbles when they email in or ring in and say, I have this bottle and it's very rare. And it's signed by the distiller and you sort of maybe know before it even starts it's a middle of very rare. And some of them are very but rare. But it's important to the person. It is important to the person. This, I think, is very rare and this could be called very rare because... Uh, Riders Tears, uh, uh, Bernard Walsh and the team down there, Rosemary, um, brought out the Riders Tears brand as part of the overall Irishman yeah. and everything else. They then started doing a limited edition cast strength release every year. 2011 it's was the first year. Yeah. Um, it is really hard to find. Really, really hard to the find. 11. The 11. The yeah, 11. Yeah, the one in the box uh, with the glasses and it looks like a book and everything else. It's very nice. These are so this year's one is out was out there that not long ago, uh, not that long ago, long, 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 long ago. I need whiskey. No, you don't. You need to concentrate. I need to concentrate. I don't need whiskey. No. <sighs> These production number wise are very very low. Um, I mean, there's the 2019 release, then it's only got 2,580 bottles. You've got uh, 2015 release, 2,100 bottles only. 2017, 5,000. I think the highest is 6,000 bottles. I don't know what year it is. I can't remember, but I, I do recall seeing uh, 6,000 bottles. So there's only 6,000 bottles of it out there on the market. Yeah. Um, again, it was for sale um, across a broad spectrum, travel and retail. Uh, in retail shops and all that sort of and stuff. And it's so an everywhere. annual release. And it's an annual release. So it's one of the things that I say to people, it's a great annual release collection. 
Worst case scenario, it's fantastic whiskey to oh, drink. It is, it is good juice. Uh, I have a bottle of the 2013 open up there, and it's lovely. It's fantastic. Really, really good. Um, Writer's Tears, um, so Bernard and them don't have their own distillery now, but they curate and, and bring together some fantastic whiskey. Mm. He's only done the new uh, pot still release there last week, the week before, and there's a few other ones. There's another one that they've done, the Japanese cask uh, finish, the Mizunaro. Um, again, another brilliant whiskey. Redhead is probably one of my favourite, just general yeah, run the mill drinking whiskey. Drink, whiskey. Yeah. You've bought me a lot of bottles of that. I have. You are a feeder. I think that you caused the problem for me drinking all the whiskey. I think you're the problem here, not me. Just I'm drinking it because I don't want you to feel guilty about giving it to me and me not enjoying it. That's you justifying your problem. Probably, yes. And I think I'm going to stick to that argument. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's Writer's Tears, as I say. I think they're a, a, a bit of a sleeping giant. There can't be that many full sets of it. No. Because, as I say, 2011 one was, was uh, flew under the radar. And it wasn't on people's radars. It wasn't on people's radars. Hopefully I am shouting about it enough and it will be on people's radars and they will look out and they will, you know, uh, add that to the collections. Charity items. Again, this month looks like it's going to be a fantastic month for us yes. for charities. As I say, we've done six to seven thousand euro on the Belfast Whiskey Week. We have uh, Dingle the Rinder at the back. We have bottle number one of the Dingle single malt, ca uh, single malt bottle number one. Batch six. Batch six. That's a stuck bit. Yeah, no. Uh, batch six of the cask strength single malt bottle number one. We have also the first five bottles ever, ever, ever of... In the whole wide world. In the whole wide world. <laughs> in the ever in the world uh, of the Lost Irish. There is the inaugural bottle number one. Uh, we have bottle number one, two, three, four, five. Um, Tim and Neil have brought out, uh, they've sourced this whiskey, built this whiskey. I mean, when you... Read the, the, the complexities I'm of just it. Reading it here, yeah. So they've what they've done is they've sourced barrels from six different continents um where the Irish have gone to, where we've ended up uh, all over the world. You've, Africa, you've got Asia, South Africa, Europe. Asia, Japanese, you've got uh, Spanish uh, sherry cask, you've got America, you've got Australia, and then you've got the Colombian rum casks. We've tasted that and I've been part of their story. Uh, I've been watching their story all along it is fantastic and i'm delighted that they've chosen to to launch the first five ever bottles i think it's going to be the end of this month early next month when it does hit america yep. market first then it's going to be in europe and ireland uh, but we've got the first ever five bottles of it so that's going for alzheimer's ireland. i think that's yeah. going for alzheimer's and all the bottles have these lovely engraved uh, plaques, plaques. yeah so you know it's a fantastic bottle looking now. bottle as well oh, no, I mean, it's the, the, the embossed rays and the orange really really eye catching as I said I, I, talking to Tim uh, to Neil earlier when I was just saying that you, it'll really pop on, on a yeah. shelf uh, and then that's for Alzheimer's and then the two dingles are for Little Blue, Little Blue, Blue Heroes. Heroes but we'll talk more about that towards the end yes, of the week exactly. so. so that's it I'm gone my head is baked I still haven't recovered from Friday and uh, but it was fun and I look forward to it. And again, a huge thank you to everybody yes, who supported it. So we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.